In this lecture, we're going to continue our discussion of pointers um, by talking a little bit about uh, uh, new and delete, um, this idea of, being, of managing um, the memory that we allocate. We'll also look at uh, arrays and how they, um, how they relate to pointers. So the new and delete instructions are used in C++ to create and remove data objects, respectively. In, in Java, we have a garbage, uh, a garbage collector that automatically looks for memory that's no longer being used and then uh, essentially frees that memory. In C++, uh, we're actually, as programmers, we are responsible for actually uh, removing data uh, when you're no longer using it, or removing, uh, uh, removing and deleting memory uh, that's been allocated. So we use this with, or we do this with the delete, uh, delete operation. So, for instance, um, if uh, if I have a pointer, a, an integer pointer called p that's already been allocated uh, with the new operation, at some point I need to um, to uh, execute the delete operation uh, and you, and we do this so that we don't have any dangling references what this means is that we don't have any pointers pointing to objects that are no longer being used uh, but also uh, so that we we don't have uh, uh, data objects that are no longer being referred to uh, meaning you know so I've allocated this memory and now I've gone out of scope but then this memory is still allocated and the compiler and the, the runtime system has no idea that that, uh, that piece of memory is no longer being used. So as programmers, we have to explicitly delete uh, the memory. So we use this with the delete operation. We just say delete p uh, in this case. And then uh, to, uh, to make things uh, uh, complete, we also set p equal to null so that we can check later to see whether or not p is actually pointing any, to anything. And if it isn't, then we know that uh, perhaps that we don't want to do any operations on that piece of memory. Now another type of variable that's related to pointers is uh, something called a reference variable. And uh, we define reference variables as a, a way of uh, creating aliases to existing variables. Um, and uh, there's a number of reasons why you might want to do this. Um, you know, per, perhaps you have uh, an iteration variable that you're using and uh, you want to be able to uh, to have one piece uh, the original um, variable perhaps to, be, to remain fixed and then you want to have an iteration variable that you change. Now the uh, d definition of the uh, reference variable uses the ampersand. Now uh, this can get to be very confusing sometimes because we sometimes think of the ampersand as a way of getting an address and we saw this with doing pointers. Uh, in this case, um, we use the ampersand as a way, when it's on the left-hand side, as a way of defining uh, that a variable is a reference to um, some other variable. Uh, and and that, at that point, then, you can refer to both objects uh, synonymously. Um, so, uh, for instance, um, it might be like you having two different names and you have your first name and your middle name, but when I refer to either one of those names, I'm still referring to you. Um, and that's the same idea here, is that we're creating a reference. Two different names that refer to the same variable. Now, another thing that uh, we can do, and we've, uh, perhaps you've seen this in uh, some of the screencasts, uh, so we can create variables uh, without uh, using the new operation um, for, uh, for class types. Um, so instead of, uh, in, in this case, uh, we're creating something that's going to be locally scoped. It's going to stay within the scope of whatever body it's been created in. So if it's, if it's a variable created within a method, then the scope of that variable is within the method, and that's it. It isn't, it isn't visible outside of the method. Um, to define a variable within the block of an if statement, for instance, it also the scope is within the, the block of the if statement. Uh, the difference here is that we're not using the, uh, the new operation. Uh, we're just uh, saying, uh, for instance, if I have a class called foo, I'm creating an instance um, called my foo instance, 
uh, and it has these parameters. Then later, when I refer to them, I don't have to use the arrow um, dereference uh, that we, uh, we've seen before, but I'm rather using the dot uh, um, dereference for uh, any of the, the members of the class. And same goes for doing the, the dot for the, um, um, for the methods. Now, this would be, this is more like how it would look like in Java, uh, except that we're not doing the new on the right hand side. Um, but, and then again, the difference here is that the scope of these variables is locally scoped. So it can be actually very confusing sometimes uh, to use this notation um, because uh, of the way that um, C++ works. Uh, but at the same time as Java programmers, you might think, well, this is more natural way to, th to think about it. So uh, the, the danger here is that the, the scope of the variable is, uh, is within um, the, uh, the, the method that's created in or whatever the local scope is. Um, also, when you create variables in that way, you don't want to, uh, um, you don't want to uh, use the delete operation because it's, it's unnecessary because it is a local variable and it, it will be destroyed automatically when you leave the current scope. So the, um, uh, when we create instances of objects, uh, remember we use a new operator um, to create uh, um, objects. We want to use uh, uh, the second version here for creating uh, declarations uh, with, a, um, uh, with a pointer. Uh, the first one would be a Java type of declaration, and that's not valid. Uh, but rather, we want to use the second. Uh, again, the, the, the data is stored in the heap. Um, and uh, we have to make sure that we use the delete operation when we create objects in this way. Um, when, uh, when we're using pointers uh, for objects, there's, uh, there's two ways that we can dereference object members. We can use sort of the Java style um, where we first dereference the, um, the pointer and then refer to the method or we just use the arrow notation. Both of these forms are equivalent. Now pointers and arrays in C++ um, are very, uh, very closely related. Uh, arrays in C++ are actually implemented as pointers. Um, so for instance, if I define an array of integers, uh, I'm actually creating an array of pointers, two integers, and creating five of those. So A is considered, in this case, a constant. Well, we can't, re we can't reassign A uh, like we would a pointer. Uh, but at the same time, uh, the thing to note here is that uh, we are indeed creating um, pointers, but we can refer to uh, each one of the uh, elements as if we were referring to um, objects within an array. So uh, what this means then is that uh, you know, when we've allocated an array, we've got uh, you know, five memory locations uh, and the, uh, uh, the eighth uh, memory location, or sorry, the zeroth memory location in reference to A uh, is the first one. And then sequentially, depending on the size of uh, whatever the data object is, we allocate the appropriate amount of space. Now, uh, there's a couple of ways to refer to the actual locations within the array. There's sort of the traditional array notation, which most of us are used to. But you can also use pointer arithmetic in doing this. So you can do reference a plus 3. That would be the same as doing a of 3. So uh, what this leads to then is a couple of different ways of um, doing things like array notation. Uh, we have the part on the left where uh, we're using the um, we're using the array notation and doing iteration. The other uh, is uh, shown on the right where we've got uh, a sum <clears throat> is equal to whatever a points to, uh, and then doing a summation using the array notation. So we're dereferencing the a plus i no uh, location, and then taking that uh, and adding it to the sum. Both of these are exactly alike. They do the, exactly the same thing. It's just a matter of uh, notational preference. Um, I find that 
using the notation on the left is appropriate when everything uh, is sort of uniform and I want to use uh, and make it clear that everything's an array. Uh, I find that I'll use the notation on the right when I need to do some interesting things with the way that I dereference the, uh, the arrays. So uh, anyway, uh, just make sure you note that these are, um, these are equivalent uh, um, notations. So a pointer can also be used to manage arrays. Um, because arrays are set up as, as, uh, as pointers, uh, for instance, if we take uh, the example on the right, um, I can uh, do uh, this thing where I allocate or I, I declare a pointer, p, um, and then I can say p is equal to new int and then say that it's an array of this length. I haven't, uh, I haven't explicitly said that p is an array by saying, say, p and then array notation 5, but I'm rather using the, uh, uh, the new operation to do this. And then once I've done this, um, I can use the array notation um, uh, or use the uh, sort of the, uh, the array, sorry, the pointer style of referring to their array locations. Um, and so we can actually also use the array, array notation uh, in the bottom part to do exactly the same thing. Uh, we first allocate the array as a pointer, as we've done above, but then I can use the array notation below um, anytime I want to uh, refer to the different locations of the array. Now, multidimensional arrays um, are a little bit different than what you would have in Java. So uh, here on the upper right, uh, the Java way of doing things would be to define a new array with the two different dimensions. In C++, uh, we actually have to define um, sort of what are called pointers to pointers. Uh, so uh, I, this basically says I'm creating an array, or I'm sorry, I'm creating a pointer to uh, an array of pointers. Oops, uh, let me go back. Um, so uh, to define this type of array as shown up here in Java, I would have to define a two-dimensional, uh, sorry, a, a pointer, uh, a pointer to pointers, and then allocate this as uh, uh, actually missing a new operation. So 2D array is equal to new int 10, uh, and then I'd have to um, uh, to allocate each one of the uh, different uh, parts of the array. Um, so this is, this can, I find that this can be a little bit confusing, so there's actually another way to do this. Um, it's to, uh, to uh, use uh, this notation here where you define a single pointer um, and uh, allocate the amount of locations that you need for each of the, um, uh, each of the parts of the two-dimensional array. And then you can, you can use the same um, array notation to uh, to do your dereferencing. Um, so it, we'll see an example of this when we uh, look at the um, the podcast uh, the screencast. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about uh, here in this uh, lecture is C plus plus strings. Um, there is uh, another lecture that will come up that talks about um, talks about strings, um, but uh, want to do a little bit here. Um, and look at their relationship to uh, uh, to pointers. So there is no built-in string type in C++. Um, you have uh, these arrays of characters that are used to, to represent uh, strings. Uh, there is a string class that uh, does things like the Java class, but as far as just uh, built-in type strings, uh, they are indeed arrays of characters. And so this is why You'll often see um, strings defined as character pointers, and then um, the definition or the declaration of what that uh, that string is. Um, so a character of strings contains all the characters of whatever is being um, put into the string, and then followed by a backslash zero, and that's sort of the null terminator. Um, so uh, the my string shown here in this example is actually a character array size of 14, so 13 characters for the hello world piece of it, and then one character for the terminating null character. 
the last thing is uh, about deallocating arrays. Uh, just, just as with all pointers, you have to make sure that if you're no longer using the, da the data that you uh, deallocate it. And so you can just say delete. If I have a pointer, um, I can say delete and then the square brackets P. Now, uh, in, in Java, we have the array out of bounds exception that's thrown whenever a bad lo array location is accessed. Unfortunately, C++ does not have this equivalent feature. Uh, so for instance, I can do things like uh, A minus one um, using um, this notation. And I can do this. And if that memory location is actually defined, it will actually do something. So you have to actually be careful because that's obviously not something that you want to do. Um, so you have to make sure that, uh, that you're uh, uh, careful about uh, about you know knowing the size of your array um, and uh, accessing the uh, the locations within the array properly. Anyway, that uh, that concludes this episode. Um, we'll be talking about uh, uh, more about C plus plus, especially on uh, uh, parameters and parameter passing in the next lecture.